What's going on everyone? My name is Nicholas Merton here at Datadash and today is April 15th of 2018. Well, folks, as you can probably tell right off the bat, I'm not in my normal studio back in the U.S., but in fact, I'm here in beautiful Chiang Mai, Thailand, which has been an extraordinary experience so far to visit. I'm here for an upcoming speaking event, and because of the fact that I've been spending countless hours to fly out this way, as well as getting to explore the city a little bit and prepare for the upcoming event, I've been quite busy. I've had my hands full over the past few days. But isn't it ironic that at the time period that I have my hands full, crypto markets decide to go haywire onto the upside? I guess Satoshi's playing his devilish games with me. Anyways, I thought I might as well go ahead and do a video today that's, again, not so much of a daily update, but continue on a video that I spent uh, a little bit of time doing the other day talking about my current stance on cryptocurrency markets. As you all know, over the past few days, we've started to see a resurgence in price action, and many people have asked me as to whether or not I think we're outside of the accumulation period and going in for the next bull cycle. So I'm going to be sharing my opinion on that, and along with that as well, I'm going to be talking about some possible catalysts in the market that might have caused this upside and along with that we'll be doing some technical analysis on the other market leaders and other players in the cryptocurrency space so without further ado let's go ahead and jump into it and spend some time taking a look at cryptocurrency markets so across the board real quick guys general tone of the market is pretty neutral today we have some big players to the upside and a few players taking on some downside but for the most part we're really seeing a lot of legacy players come in we see BitShares, iota nem as well as bitcoin and a few others coming in taking in some good gains some getting into the double digit range but for the most part i really want to spend some time talking about over the past few days in the market because many of you have been asking me you know nick is this a bottom in the market are we really starting to see some uh, resilience in the market and seeing some upside price action well not only have we clearly seemed to have built a base around 250 billion dollars in market capitalization which was a level that i was talking about heavily for the past few weeks but we've obviously seen a resilience in price action as well with finally some double digit billion dollar volume coming in after a few days where we are hanging below 10 billion dollars in volume a lot of that coming in through bitcoin but not only bitcoin we also see it as well in the altcoin space we started to see some more active trading in altcoins where we've almost tripled volume in the market for altcoins so this is definitely a good sign but even though we had a resilience in the sense of volume we started to see a little bit of downside can we maintain the volume and take it on to higher levels that's the real big question here and we'll dive into that as we go through the video now, along with that as well, uh, I know my webcam will probably get in the way, so I'm going to go ahead and jump here to the one year. But as you can probably see over time, Bitcoin dominance has started to drop. And when Bitcoin dominance drops, this means that we're hitting into a period of higher risk taking, guys. This means that if Bitcoin dominance continues to drop like it has, and we've started to see some significant drops down from 45%, 45.5% uh, down to around 42.3%, we're now starting to see more risk taking in the market. And it's le levying out into the other players in the market, especially other coins other coins got a huge jump up the past few days as well as even some market leaders such as ethereum and ripple so because of that again i think we're going to start seeing what we saw much like we did historically back here in may 2007 where through april may and june we started to see some serious risk taking in the market where altcoins started to really outperform bitcoin now this isn't a, a down play on bitcoin i think bitcoin's going to do great and if you want to play on the safer side bitcoin might be better but i think this is going to be very much like what we saw back in may where it seemed like everything was going haywire much like what we saw in december and we really started to see some solidified gains in the altcoin space some new players coming to the horizon so again if we continue to see bitcoin dominance drop below 42 percent i think this could be a continuation of it and one of the biggest signs that we're going in for one of the high risk periods in the market where we could start to see some really really good profitable upside in crypto markets so but let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the market leader we all know is going to decide as to whether or not this is going to happen and that is bitcoin so we talked about this in regards to my uh, last previous video on where I kind of stand on cryptocurrencies or where cryptocurrency is heading. And it was the big topic discussion of the fact that we've seen obviously a great run up from 1K, uh, Bitcoin at 1,000 to 20,000. But along with that as well, the decline and the supposed kind of bear market and correction we started to see in Bitcoin going from around 20,000 down to the $6,000 range at its lows back in February. 
But ever since then, really, after we've kind of started to enter this period, it looks like we're going through what's known as a period of accumulation. And this is what we talked about in the previous video. However, many people might be curious as to whether or not we're getting past that period of accumulation. So I want to go ahead and spend some time to talk a little bit about that period of accumulation. So the first thing that people have brought up in regards to asking me as to whether or not I've changed my tone is the fact that Bitcoin is now trading in a range that's outside of 8,000. We're hanging around 8,100, depending on what exchange you're looking at. But because of that, many people have asked, you know, Nick, is this Bitcoin testing in regards to seeing as to whether or not we can escape this previous accumulation period that we've been stuck in for quite some time as we've taken on to lower levels in price? And I think it's an important thing to watch. I think we have to see whether or not we can hold above this level here. Now, the big reason I say that, and I'm not so uh, exactly confident in regards to taking on the full bull swing, seeing the full exuberance come back into the market just yet, is because we got a lot of volume back here. We got around, I think someone had estimated the number as they looked across all exchanges, all the big buy orders come in, that there was around $250 million of Bitcoin bought within a one hour period. Lots of accumulation coming in, meaning that a lot of buyers on the institutional side, a lot of whales must have come in in regards to picking up Bitcoin. But it's important to note with that, that at the same time, we need to have that volume maintain as we go up to higher prices. We can't have a one-time event and then remain on this low volume here as Bitcoin pushes higher. You can see ever since the volume's gotten cut off that we really haven't gained too much in price action. We gained about $300 of the price action. In order for Bitcoin to continue moving like it did, or at least remotely close to how it did, we need to have more volume. You're not going to get these kind of gains in regards to Bitcoin unless we get the matching volume. That doesn't have to be instant like that within one hour, but we need to see some of these big volume candles spread out and maintain higher levels of trading volume as we see price go higher. That's a signaling sign that institutions are continuing to trade, continuing to buy, and they're hoping to see higher prices. Another thing important to note as well that many people have been curious about is that it looks like technically, depending again on what exchange you're looking at, that we've not only gotten out of the $8,000 period, but that we're, that we're actually finally looking like we might be able to test outside of the line of resistance. Now, here's what I'm looking for. I'm hopefully looking that we get, if this is the case, if that we're getting above this resistance line, that we can close above the 50 day and then again retest to see if we can get past the 200 day moving average. What I see happening more than anything is that again, we're going to see a bounce of resistance and support. And this is gonna be a very healthy sign for a continued run up in Bitcoin. If we are getting past this line of resistance here, if we are looking to finally see if we can escape this period of accumulation, which again, we might have to go through for some time, what I'm going to be looking for is that if we continue to climb up here in the lower 800s area above this accumulation zone, if that we can get above the 50-day uh, the moving average and then test the 200-day and then come back down and find support both not only on the 50-day but also roughly around the uh, $8,000 mark, which was serving as resistance throughout the period of accumulation. If you can get that, if Bitcoin itself can maintain that level of support, that is going to be extremely healthy for a future run up. So I'm going to be definitely looking for that. If it's the case that Bitcoin gets knocked down, if we get a sell off side, uh, sell side action, if we start to see a knockdown in price, I think again, we're going to climb through this period of accumulation until we smooth out against this line of resistance. And that might be all the way until we start in May. But again, we have to remain patient, guys. We have to remain diligent. Keep your strategy for both ways. And whatever one uh, starts to show the signs that it's going to turn out, again, follow which way feels comfortable. My sign is that I'm going to wait and see if this really gets a solidified close above um, this uh, accumulation period at 8,000 to 6,000 before I really start taking the bullish side of things. So I'm remaining neutral still. I'm still kind of in the accumulation mindset at the moment. But outside of that, I wanna spend some time to talk about the other market leaders. And then again, later on, we'll talk about some of the catalysts that might've caused this recent boost up in the market. So first off, I wanna spend some time here on Ethereum. Ethereum, I gotta say, was looking very nice over the past few days. Uh, though we didn't get the volume in, the price action was looking very steady for Ethereum. The problem that I see, as much as it's nice and smooth and it's looking very bullish, is that we're still seeing resistance at the 200-day moving average. 
Now, we've seen uh, generally resistance at a, a, for Ethereum down across the 50-day in the past, but now we're looking at the 200-day moving average as it started to generally show a decline for the first time uh, really in a lot of Ethereum's history. We haven't seen this uh, kind of serious downside action since really um, back here in uh, October. It's really started to form back here in November going through and shaping up through the early part of 2018. If we can break through this and again find support that might be good, but with the 50-day coming close to the 200-day, it looks like a death cross might be coming in and that we could see some lower price action. If we get the altcoin cycle though soon, I think that you could see Ethereum break through this and show resilience. At the moment though, I'm gonna wait patiently until we get a close above that 200-day. It's too risky for me right now. XRP, BTC, obviously you guys know where I generally stand on Ripple. As much as I usually stand pretty bearish on Ripple, sorry, I don't know why ads are starting to pop up on, uh, it's telling me I need to do a 30-day free trial. Um, the whole thing in regards to Ripple that I do like, as much as I've remained generally bearish, is that this has popped up amongst the 200-day moving average. This did not go below it. And with the resilience in the market, we've actually gotten above the 50-day. Now, if we continue to hold the 50-day moving average, and this continues to flag out, as we can obviously see here, on the four hour, this might be an opportunity for a swing trade. Again, not doing anything right now, but at the moment, I'm hoping to see it hold on that 50 day moving average if there's going to be a trading opportunity for the short term. And the long term, though, I think Ethereum's got a lot more uh, downside to go through. Going on here, Bitcoin Cash. Uh, again, Bitcoin Cash not doing anything exciting, still holding towards the lows. Again, not touching it till 5 million Satoshis. So going on here, guys, last but not least, in the kind of traditional players that we look at, we're going to look at a lot more. Litecoin, not keeping up with Bitcoin. Again, still waiting for this to make contact with the 200-day and see, like we did back here, if we can get support. Again, nothing to extend right now. Nonetheless, Litecoin, I guess, is doing fine, just like other market players that Bitcoin's doing good, but it's not beating up Bitcoin. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the market leaders here. Uh, Cardano, ADA, BTC, finally getting above that resistance point we were talking about, guys. And it's looking like this could start chugging up again if we get the altcoin cycle. Now, it's holding on the brim there. It's holding generally around where we saw resistance. I was saying to hopefully get above not only this price range to curl up above there, but also get um, up, um, get up above generally around 26 to 2700 Satoshis. And it looks like in this case, we might be getting that. Again, you need the volume to maintain, which we're not seeing right now. We saw the big day of volume price action that we saw with Bitcoin and other altcoins. Got to see that coming on Cardano. Hopefully retest those highs. And if it's the case, if we curve back up, I think we're setting up for some newer high levels around the 4,000 to 5,000 Satoshi range going in towards the end of April. So taking a look here at a few more players here. Icon, Icon doing well, holding on the 50-day moving average. Nothing extremely exciting here in regards to indicators. Uh, volume has dried up over the past few days. So uh, again, we need to see more volume in this market, guys, for this to really happen or to really see uh, some serious upside over the next few weeks. I want to take a look at a few other smaller players in the market. Sub, again, one of my favorite long-term holdings, guys. Sub showing a very nice technical pattern. Uh, what looks like it could be a cup and handle here as we take it here to the four hour. We can start to see a sub has been coming its price action. We had a little bit of a handle here, and this might be the continued breakout for Substratum. Again, you need some volume to come in on this. It's been maintaining very nicely comparative to most other altcoins in the space. As we can see, Substratum's volume has been really picking up on this lower end, much like we saw even higher levels than back in December. So keep an eye on these players where you start to see volume coming in in these uh, lower price ranges. Taking a look at IOTA BTC, uh, along with that as well, IOTA looking very healthy here, getting not only above the 50 day and the 200 day, but also looking like it built support to uh, gain some upside. If we can hold a close above uh, 20, or sorry, uh, uh, is that yeah, 200, uh, sorry, 200,000 Satoshis. I was, I was tricking myself on there. If you can get a close above 200,000 Satoshis, this could be really good for a continuing uh, grind up to the upside. Again, you need some volume though. Not too much volume coming into this market, guys. Just got to point that out. Last but not least, I almost forgot, got to cover NEO. Uh, NEO has done some interesting price action over the past few days, guys. We finally saw, saw some serious support in regards to NEO. And it's a question as to whether or not we can get above the 50-day moving average because this looks like it's going to serve as some resistance as it has in the past. So again, we've seen some big pop-ups just like we saw in NEO where a little bit of volume came in. We saw some serious upside action. The question is, 
can we get above the 50-day moving average at the moment? That's what I'm looking for. If not, I think we're going to fall back to the 200-day. And if we can't find support there, we're going to repeat history and decline to lower levels. All right. So we've done some technical analysis here. I want to go ahead and spend some time talking about some reasons as to why Bitcoin might be going up. Many people have been proposing a lot of different things to me. I thought I might as well go ahead and share my thoughts on it. One thing that I got really interesting today from a guy I met here in Chiang Mai, Thailand uh, named Kyle was telling me that there was this headline. I don't know how I missed this, but basically there was a crypto the fact that uh, a crypto headline in regards to uh, a Muslim scholar coming out and stating that uh, Bitcoin is declared halal. Now, there's basically in uh, pretty much in Islam, uh, there's really two different uh, kind of key words that you want to keep in mind when something is good or bad. Uh, there is in the case of I mean, I want to make sure I get this right. When something is halal, it's usually um, uh, pretty much okay. It's in some cases it can be seen as good, uh, but in regards to something that's haram, it's that's it's forbiddable. It's you're not supposed to touch it. It's it's something that goes against the code. Alcohol would be an example for that. So in this case, this is really good news for Bitcoin. Uh, now I don't think it's enough to to justify uh, really declaring that Bitcoin is seen as positive in the Muslim community. It was a Muslim scholar. Um, who came out and stated uh, it was actually it was uh, not so much a scholar, but they also had a fund uh, that was talking about um De uh, deeming Bitcoin as halal, meaning that it was good, it was okay to use. And as you can go through, a lot of people were saying the big thing that they thought that was the correlation was uh, Bitcoin's price had spiked up over $700 in less than one hour. And this was very, very close to when there was this declaration that it was okay. And many people see it as it opening up a market of 1.6 billion Muslims to get into the space. Now, I do believe that this is very important. I think you've got a lot of geopolitical issues uh, that would leave... Um, the Muslim community, especially in the United Arab Emirates, to want to get involved in Bitcoin. Now, why do I say that? Well, because if you think about it, they've got their money heavily invested in oil. And a lot of this new money coming in from uh, their, obviously their oil, the oil families, the dynasties in uh, the United Arab Emirates need to put their money somewhere else. They need it to grow some way. And I can tell you guys, I'm going to Dubai relatively soon. You can see that they're putting their money in so many different things. And I have no doubt that so long as it's seen as halal, it's an okay thing in regards to uh, investing in it. I bet you're going to have a lot of people investing in cryptocurrency, especially players like Bitcoin that are very limited. So it was an interesting theory. I'm going to have to dive into it more, think about it a little bit more. Could be one of the reasons no one knows. Uh, along with that as well, I've been hearing a few different theories in regards to the fact some people feel that institutions are getting more involved. This has been possibly due to the news of uh, the Rothschilds and uh, the uh, Rockefellers and George Soros getting involved in cryptocurrencies, the infancy, uh, an infamous currency manipulator. And along with that as well, the topic of the fact that tax season is starting to end. And as many of you know, I know myself, I had to cash out some crypto to pay for taxes. And a lot of big whales in the space probably did the same so they didn't have the IRS on their tail. And now they're starting to come back in after they filed taxes pick up Bitcoin at the lows. So it could be the case. Uh, there's there's not going to be a lot of sell side pressure anymore in the market. We've started to see possibly some bulls come in. I think this is one of more of the rational catalysts in the market for Bitcoin here. If there is going to be a reason. But I want to really emphasize guys, and this is something that I always try to drill in with my videos here, is that Correlation isn't always causation, and sometimes we try to find reasons in these markets as to why things are happening. I gotta be fair with you all, it could just be very well the fact that prices have remained low here, that we've been in this accumulation period and going towards lower prices for quite some time. And with Bitcoin, going generally around 6,500 to 6,000, you really have a discount of Bitcoin sitting anywhere from around 60 to 70 percent. And that's a huge discount for those who are larger players in the space who have a lot of money to get in who missed out on the previous run-up. So again, with all the new developments coming in, with that positive video I did talking about all the fundamentals in the market, it could just be that people are getting in. I will say though, that with tax season ending, as well as Bitcoin being declared as halal, that might be a good sign for cryptocurrencies in the long term. But I'd like to hear what you guys think down in the comments down below on this topic. I know it's a very interesting topic, but also very controversial. Everyone's got their different opinions on it. So I'd like to hear down below and get a discussion. But until the next video, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for always remaining patient guys during these times where i've been absent from the channel you guys know i'll be trying to produce as much content as possible but until the next video i'll see you all in the next one stay tuned